Welcome, welcome, everybody. Welcome, everybody, to Wednesday night Bible study. I want to see you win ministries. We are in the stead of our very own apostle Angela Miles and Pastor Derek Miles. We are the Mims, and we're super excited about tonight's word. Amen. We will be walking through the word of God on tonight. It's going to be Leviticus, the 11th chapter. No, not the Leviticus. It's Numbers. Amen. We're in Numbers. Amen. The 11th chapter tonight. And we're asking you to go ahead and share and go ahead and tell somebody that we are all sharing in your groups. Amen. Share it on your timeline and let them know that we get ready to have Bible study tonight. It's going to be awesome. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you, Father. We thank you in advance for what you're about to do. We thank you, Lord God, for every listener here on today. Father, we pray that you would bless and move by your power. Father, we bind the work of the enemy on today. We pray that spirit of the living God will break out tonight. I pray that you will bring edification to every hearer, that you will bring clarity and understanding, Father, so that your people may be able to rightly divide the word of truth. We pray tonight, God, that you would have your way, that you would minister to your people on tonight. We pray, Father, that our flesh would die now and that spirit of Christ will resurrect in us, Father. Father, and that it will speak even the mysteries of the kingdom, Father. Father, we decrease right now, Spirit of God. You are welcome tonight. Welcome to show up. Welcome to show up and welcome to have your way, Father. We bind up technical difficulties. We bind the work of Satan tonight. Satan, the Lord rebuke you and the blood of Jesus against you right now. We command you to take your filthy hands off in advance. We decree and declare a flow of the Holy Ghost. We decree and declare a move of God on tonight. We decree and declare that people be encouraged and strengthened and lifted up, God, in the name of Jesus, Father God, that they will serve you wholeheartedly. Father, we pray that you will move like never before. We pray that you would draw even now by your power. We pray that you would add, God, even to this ministry daily, such as to be saved. We pray, God, that you would touch our apostle on tonight, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus that you would heal her, God, God, from the uh, oral surgery that took place on today. We pray strength in our leaders, both of them, Father, in the name of Jesus, as they continue, oh God, to do your work. We pray I had your protection over them. God, and even all the congregants, God, I pray that you would draw in tonight. Draw by your spirit. Let the anointing destroy the yoke of your people. Father, replenish tonight. Many have went to work. Many have done different things on today, Father God. But I pray that your spirit will replenish them. Even as the word go forth, we know that the word is spirit and it is life. I pray that you would give life tonight. I pray for everything that's dead, God. Hallelujah, that you didn't command to drop and die. That it will come alive tonight. We speak to the dead thing. We speak to the dead thing in them, God. And we speak it to come alive. We prophesy to the bones tonight. And we command them to come back together tonight. We pray, Spirit of God, have your divine way tonight. God, we step out of the way. And Father, we ask you tonight to have your way, sweet spirit. Let the spirit of God just take over. Let the spirit of God just flow. Let the spirit of God just move. Let the spirit of God heal. Let the spirit of God deliver. Let the spirit of God set free. Let the spirit of God answer questions, God. In the name of Jesus tonight, bring clarity to the heart. God of your listeners on tonight. And Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for everybody. Bless everybody that God decided to listen on tonight. In the name of Jesus, God. And Father, we give your name the glory, the honor and praise in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Do us a favor on tonight if you are on. Amen. Go ahead and share. Amen. Go ahead and like and share on tonight. Sharing is caring. Amen. That's a song. Amen. When I used to teach the children, amen, back in the day, amen, that was a song that said sharing is caring. Amen. And if you, amen, care about, amen, God's people, if you, amen, or a um, follower, amen, or a member of I Want to See You Win Ministries, go ahead, amen, like and share on tonight. Amen. We thank God for you on tonight. Go ahead and say something, honey. Amen. We just want to thank everybody who's uh, joining us for the night for uh, Numbers chapter 11 as we have been going through all the chapters from Genesis up until now. Yes. And uh, it's, it's been, it's been, uh, 
been uh, a blessing, a blessing <laughs> exciting way to go it is so. amen and so we just glad amen that you all are on tonight again i go ahead and share amen i know amen there's more people amen that want to get on bible study on tonight and so we're so excited, amen. We're sharing too, amen. We're not stingy, amen. Somebody needs the word of God. We give unto our apostle, amen, to our pastor on tonight. God bless you. We love you, amen. And thank you for entrusting us with this platform on tonight. We pray, amen, that the things that we say tonight, amen, glory to God, that even you be encouraged and you be strengthened, amen, because uh, and we want you to know that we love you, amen, from the bottom of our hearts, amen. We do give honor also to Amen. The fivefold ministry of this house. Amen. If you are a part of the fivefold ministry uh, of you, of, of I want to see you win ministries. Amen. We give you honor tonight. We give honor also to the laity. Amen. Those, amen, that are a part of this ministry. Amen. God bless you. And those that, amen, are partners. Amen. From far and near, God bless you. Greetings to you on tonight. Amen. We're going to, if you do us a favor, go ahead and turn with us to, um, Numbers, the 11th chapter. Oh, it was juicy. Amen. Wasn't it, honey? When we began to study this, this was a, a great chapter. Amen. And I believe that God's people tonight is going to be stirred, encouraged. Amen. To, um, amen. To follow after God and be obedient. Amen. So we're going to begin reading, honey. Do you want to start reading or I'll read whatever you want to do tonight? Let's, we're going to let the Holy Ghost have his divine way. All right, honey. You ready? I'm ready. All right. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it. Mm -hmm. That means a lot of folks were out there complaining, mummering amongst each other, yes. complaining, you know, and don't know that the all seeing God heard it. You know he was saying? listening. Listening, listening to everything. Yes, the scripture says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. Amen. And if his eyes only, he can see it. But not only can he see it, but he can hear it. Amen. Go ahead, honey. The Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled, and the fire of the Lord burnt among them and consumed them that they were in the uttermost parts of the camp. Amen. And so God does not like, in essence, the reason why he did that, because they were murmuring and complaining. Amen. Go ahead, honey. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched, and he called the name of the place Tibera, mm -hmm. because the fire of the Lord burnt among them. Amen. Tibera is the place of burning, and um, God had the God had delivered them out of Egypt, and they have they they was you know out of all the things that they had endured, they had to the nerve to uh, try to start complaining. And murmuring, and you know, they were ungrateful in essence. Go ahead, honey. We on uh, verse four, and the Lord mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? In spite of everything that had transpired, you know, they were still, even though God had already listen, <laughs> it's so funny because. You know, this is how this generation is. God had brought them out of the land of Egypt. He brought them out of bondage and slavery. He brought, brought them out of, uh, of, of being beaten, mistreated. You know, they had, they was worked hard yeah. and uh, they, you know, brought them all out of all of that mess. And in spite of, they complained. Now, then when they complained, God uh, uh, began to send a, a, a fire, right? And it burned up the people that were complaining, right? So that was like signs and wonders. Right. And so uh, it, it was it was a, a unquenchable fire until Moses began to cry out to the Lord on behalf of the people and God quenched the fire. Right. OK. And so now we in we're talking about what is we in four now, honey. Five. We're in five. Now they're complaining again about uh, 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 food to eat. You know, and how God had, uh, uh, well, actually, yeah, because talking about how God had, how they had plenty in essence when they were in Egypt, but they forgot all about all the things that there was transpired. And it was so funny that when we go through things in, in life, we forget about, we just remember all the good things, but we don't remember all the times that we were suffering over there in Egypt. 
you know, and how God had brought them out of Egypt, honey, but they still had an Egypt mentality. Out Talk of, about it, honey. Out of bondage, out of slavery, you know, being disrespected and misused. Yes. All that, you know, they say that their mind was saying it didn't cost them anything, but in essence, it did cost them a lot. Yes. You know, to mentally, physically, all, spiritually, all, spiritually, all those things. You know, their slave mentality to me was, as he was saying, it didn't cost us anything. You know, cost us, it did. But, it really did. But but some people, you know, they you take them out of a situation or out of slave mentality, but you can't, you know, can't take the slave mentality out their mind. That's why uh, over in, uh, I think it's, it's Romans, the 12th chapter, it's the second verse. The Bible says, for our mind to be transformed. But I said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. The mind got to be renewed so you can prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So when God brings us out, amen, he don't want just our physical bodies out. You hear me? But he want our minds to be transformed. Because see, God can bless us. Amen. But if you from the if you came from the hood and you go over to Amen West over hill somewhere, Amen, and you still have the same mentalities, you're gonna bring the roaches with you in essence. Amen. So God is saying tonight, He was telling them, I mean, even though He had brought them out all the bondage and slavery and beatings and working hard and all those different things, He had brought them out of that. Amen. But all they could think about was the cucumbers. You hear me? All they could think about was the cucumbers and the, what was it, honey? The melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. Yeah, Amen. I got ahead of myself. Go ahead, honey. <laughs> we remember, verse 5, <laughs> we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely. Uh -huh. The cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. They had a nice, nice little setup. <laughs> you know, they had a nice little setup. Uh -huh. But as my honey was saying, it's the renewing of the mind. You know, you it start with the mind. And, exactly, because you can always see the thing about it. He just did, did say renew your foot. He just said renewing of the eye. Come on, honey. Or renewing of the head. He started with the mind. The mind. Amen. And why? Amen. Because amen is if it enters into the mind, you can it'll go start going to the heart, and you can be able to carry it out. So the Bible says that's why we got to renew our minds daily. Amen. Because, amen, with the Bible, we're being transformed. And when you think about transformer and the transformers, I mean, they regular, they were, they was, uh, they were regular, like I see who was the bumblebee was a car convertible, right, baby? Amen. But when he transformed, it was a process. His arms came out, his wings came out. Amen. He turned, you know, he everything came out, his head came out, and he became, even though he was a, a surface or flat, he he more he uh what is it called? metamorphosis yeah. into amen a big old uh, uh, uh acrobat was it that's what they call no, autobot autobot okay <laughs> come on i'm I, I was close <laughs> and so anyhow amen and that's what we got to do amen our minds got when you say transform they got to expand amen and, and and so the people were out of egypt physically but their minds amen was still there Amen. Have you been in a place in a time where you was in a relationship and you got out the relationship when your mind was still there? So physically you can receive, amen, that Boaz or that that that, uh, that queen that God has for you because you were still over there and brought the Bobo, a sister Susu, you know, house. Amen. Physically you, you were so tied to them. Amen. And that's what God was saying. He said, we got to renew our mind. And the children of Israel during this time, amen, they were stuck on, amen, uh, like in a physical relationship. I'm just, let, me, let me give you an example. How it can be a toxic relationship. He can beat you and all that different stuff, but he take you to nice restaurants. All you can think about is the nice restaurant, but you can't think about the time he was black in your eye in essence. Amen. That's where the children of Israel were. They have forgot about all the other things that they endured and how the, the how 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 Moses was raised up because by the reason of the, the, the taskmaster, it was that somebody was praying and it went up to the heavens and God sent down uh, Moses to be a not sent down and got Moses to raise up Moses to be a deliverer, and now God has positioned and went through, they went through the plagues and everything, honey. Amen. They went through all kind of locusts. They went through the frogs, the firstborn. Amen. All of dying. All these different things they were encountering. The water turned to blood. Come on, the water that was turning into blood. But still, all they could think about was 
the cucumbers and the melons, the garlic and the onions. Amen. Are you in that place? Amen. What God has brought you out. Amen. And all you can think about is Brother Bobo, but he was busting you in your head. Amen. And so God was letting them know. Amen. Uh, he, God was kindled. He was angry. He was fired up. He was displeased. He was displeased with the complaining and with the murmuring. And we got a we got a lot of things. Even church folks at times complain. You know it's the saying? truth. You know, and to be honest, y'all have, have been guilty. Yes, guilty of complaining, complaining amongst each other. You know, complain to God. And the thing about it is, when God uh, continues to try to bless you. You know what I'm saying? You can't forget. There's always a complaint before the blessing really happens. You know, even Moses at one time, you know, he had a speaking problem. He actually complained to God about it. He, he said he couldn't do it. Yeah, he had a speech part of it. But, but God let him know, you know, as long as I got you, you know what I'm saying, go on and, and, and do that, the work that I sent for you to do. Absolutely. So, you know, we all been guilty of, of complaining, but just to let you know, you know, God is displeased. When we murmur and complain. We complain, especially if we're doing it too much. And the thing about it is, too, honey, if God gives you, if God tells you to go, he's going to give you the gas. Right. I'm going to say that one more time. If God tells you to go, he's going to give you the gas. Amen. So, in essence, what I'm saying is, Moses didn't realize at that time he was just looking at his uh, inadequacy. But when God gives you the gas, I mean, give you the tell you to go. He's gonna give you the ammunition. He's gonna give you the gas. In essence, he's gonna equip you. He equips the God equips the call. And so, uh, anyhow, let's go ahead and go on to uh, verse. Is it six? We on verse six. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before our eyes. Mm -hmm. And the manna was as Corinthian sea. In the color thereof as the color of Adelium. Okay. I'm going to tell you what Corander is. Corander is like a creamy brown seed um, that gives a warm or aromatic, aromatic and slightly um, citrus flavor. Right. So the manna was actually, it was something good. It was something that was rained down from heaven. Amen. That God created specifically for the children of Israel. Yeah, yeah, it was refreshing. You know, just think about an orange, that citrus taste, That's a, especially if it's cold. Amen. So it, it, it gave a, a, um, a pleasant and refreshing taste to it. But they was yet complaining. And let me see, I got down what the bedillium means. It's a fragrant re uh, resin produced by a number of trees related to myrrh, used in perfume. So it looked like uh, some myrrh or something. It was shaped in that type, particular uh, 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 a fragrant of resin. But what like, I'm like, man, I'm thinking maybe like a little, you know, like a little sphere or something that came down. But it was good to the taste. But still, in spite of all, they was complaining they wanted some food. God done rained down the manna. And now the, the manna was good. And I guess they got tired of the manna. They were still complaining. They wanted some, some meat. <laughs> Go ahead. Talk verse, about it. Honey. Verse 8. And the people went about and gathered it and grind it in meal or beat it in mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. Yes. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. Yes. Verse 9. And when the drew dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Yes. So God was literally raining down yes. with uh, manna uh, um, from heaven. From heaven. Uh, from from there. I mean, how many of y'all want some manna? Amen from heaven. Amen. Yes. <laughs> Something that God has created just for you. Amen. Not nothing that was made by the hands of man. Amen. Nothing that nobody else got. Amen. But God has specifically rained out a specific food for his people, but yet they were still complaining. Do you find yourself in that place tonight? In a place of where you complaining and God has strategically set up some things just for you. You forgot what he did a few months ago. You forgot he answered those prayers. Amen. A, a couple of days ago, you forgot he saved those kids. You forgot he, he gave he uh, brought your kids out. You forgot he paid the bills the last time. Do you find yourself in a place of complaining like the children of Israel did? Go ahead. Absolutely. Verse 10. Then Moses heard the people wept throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent. And the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. 
talk about it, honey. And and Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in the sight that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me? Listen, let, see, let me let me now, take, <laughs> talk about it, honey. Complaining <laughs> can be contagious sometimes. <laughs> You know, it's they, true. They complaining in the camps. You know, they already they got. They mama them. They at the they tent complaining. At the, at the tent. Now. One Moses. Moses <laughs> is complaining slight, to God. Slightly, He's like, I'm going to say slightly complaining. <laughs> he was saying, God, listen. And, but he, he complained you know, to the right person. Yeah, though. yeah. I just want to say that. He was talking to the right person. You know, because the thing about it is they were just complaining and murmuring. You know, it's one thing to uh, discuss something and and not get no result just murmur and complain about it instead of you know we the bible tells us to take all things to god in prayer right yeah. and so moses went to god and started complaining to him like listen all it's just one of me <laughs> it's 50 million in essence of them and they all complain and just imagine because sometimes you know i'm a mother of, of five right and i have a son-in-law so you know with all they stuff my stuff and everything we got to do you know it, the burden you know the responsibility is great right so just imagine about six hundred thousand men soldiers not including the women and children they were all complaining to moses so moses what he did he took his burden to the lord Go ahead, yeah, he, got, he got fed up you <laughs> know, like lord they, they, your people yeah they were like, <laughs> knowing him you know, that they're complaining <laughs> glory go okay, ahead we on verse 12. Have I convinced all this people? Have I begotten them that thou that thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom as a nursing father buried the sucking child <laughs> unto the land which thou swears unto thy fathers? See, Moses was complaining. He, he was like, he actually called them babies. Do I have to? <laughs> Carry, carry them and, and these your people right lord nurse lord. them like some little bitty babies because that's what do uh uh that's what babies do they murmur and complain they whine and they yeah. were whining and and the anger of the, the lord was kindled greatly the bible says against them and moses was displeased as well he's he saying okay god and yes these your people whine it's just one of me you know so yeah. god i'm gonna need you to do something about it go ahead honey. verse 13 which shall i have flesh to give unto all these people for they weep unto me saying give us flesh that they that we may eat mm -hmm. i am not able to bear all these people alone he said i can't do it it is too heavy for me and that's what we got to do we have to remember let me tell you something that's that's really good that's a stopping moment to a pausing moment to go in and tell you this you are not created to carry the burdens of the world up on your shoulders Amen. The Bible, Jesus, that was Jesus' job, right? Amen. We bear what we bear. Amen. One another burdens. The Bible said we're doing that we fulfill the law. But amen, we can't carry, amen, the sins of the world or the problems of the world up on our shoulders. Amen. What do we do? Amen. As intercessors of the Lord. Amen. We go and take our petitions to the Lord. And this is Moses. Moses was standing in the gap for the people. Amen. You ought to think that's why you should never come against leadership. You should never come against intercessors. You should never come against people praying people. Why? Because they stand in the gap. Amen. Before the people and God. Amen. And so here is Moses crying out in his agony. He said, listen, these folks are getting on my nerve in essence. Amen. God, I didn't ask for this. You gave me this responsibility. And it is great. And I ain't trying to be funny, Lord, but I'm not you. And essence, what he was saying, he was being real. Amen. And that's what we got to do. Amen. We must be real with the Lord. Cry out. Amen. And tell him your heart problem. Cry out and tell him your desires. Desires, I'm telling you today. Amen. I begin to tell him this is such and such and such and such and such and such. I begin to lay the list down to the Lord. And a lot of times we feel because we are limited. You got to know that God is not. And he's going to tell you later on down in his scripture as we continue to read that he ain't no limit to what he can do. Okay. Yeah. Let's go in, honey. Verse 15. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me. I pray thee out of the hand if I have found favor in thy sight. Let me not see my wretchedness. Moses was saying, look here, but I gotta go through all this oh, and all this. You ain't gonna help me. Just go ahead and kill, kill me. me. It was great. And we don't want to be in a place, listen, 
especially as leaders, what we have in the fivefold ministry and even of this ministry and around the world. Amen. God has set leaders, uh, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. We, uh, I want to see you win ministries. We have an apostle and a pastor. Amen. And those that are in the fivefold ministry, we're set in place to be able to help and to undergird. Amen. To hold up our spirit, there our spiritual Moses. We holding up their hand. Amen. We don't want to be in a place where we're burdened them. Amen. And the people was burdened. Amen. The, the man of God. Amen. We don't want to be in a place where we burdening in the man of woman of God with our problem, as special as mature saints. Amen. We got to do like Moses did. Amen. When we in position to be able to turn our face to the wall. Amen. And so it wasn't a physical wall. But when I say a wall, he went in his place of prayer. Now, your place of prayer may be in your shower. Sometimes that's mine. Your place of prayer may be on the restroom, on the toilet. Amen. Your place of prayer may be in your car. Amen. But as the people of God, amen, wherever your place of prayer is, take it to God. Because some of these things, amen, are not meant for our leaders to carry. We don't want them to pray for us in greed. greed. Amen. We want to be a, it to be a delight. Amen. When they begin to pray for us. Amen. We don't want them to go to God and say, this is such, such and such is doing this. Such and such is getting on my nerve. But this is what Moses, he was in that place. He's like, Lord, it's too much for me. I can't do it on my own. Go ahead. Uh, we on verse 16. And the Lord said unto Moses, gather unto me 70 men of the elders of Israel. Yes. The 70 mature. Men. Elders were talking about mature. You can't elders. gather everybody. He said, but you gather 70 mature men. Go ahead. Whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people and officers over them and bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation that they may stand there with thee. Yes. And I will come down and talk with three with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and I will put it upon them, and they shall bear the burden of the people with thee that thou bear it not thyself alone. Listen, so in essence in essence, um, you know, God when we was reading it, this was so good. That's about delegating. So God was going to get ready to, because the, the burden was so great. Yeah. Because there was so many people in one person. God begins, he said, told Moses to gather 70 of the elders, the mature men of the camp, and get them together. And he was going to get take a part of the spirit of God that was up on Moses, a part of it. He said, I'm going to take some of it. And I'm going to place it up on the 70 so they can carry out the work of God. Amen. But we got to be mature. Amen. Everybody wants a position. I mean, everybody wants to be able to be a, 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 a their name called. Everybody wants to be in a position where they behind the mic, the, 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 the behind the uh, the cameras, was behind the, the pulpit. Amen. Glory to God. But they don't want to be mature. He said, find 70. Amen. Elders, mature ones. Amen. That he can put his spirit up on. And I'm asking you today, are you, amen, a, 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 a candidate that God can put his spirit up on? Amen. I begin to see the delegation is very important. Delegation is very important so you don't wear yourself out. Amen. That's why we're in position tonight. Amen. We were delegated to be in this place. Amen. Don't go to a position where you're not delegated to be. Amen. We were delegated tonight to be in this position. Amen. And why? Amen. Because, amen, we was in position to do it. You, if you want to be, amen, delegated or a position, you got to make yourself be in position to do it. Amen. You must be a mature one. Amen. We got to put away, amen. The Bible says, um, uh, when I was a child, amen, I thought as a child. He said, but when I became mature or a man, I put away childish things. So the 70, amen, they were, they were grown men. They were mature in the spirit, and 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 and, and God was able to, amen, pour, take a portion of the spirit that was upon. Oh my God, that's powerful. Upon Moses and put it up on you, amen. We have leaders of this house, amen. Are you in position, amen, to get a part of their spirit, some of their spirit to be upon you, amen? We are supposed to be duplicates of them. <laughs> you have to also remember, you know, God is oh, glory. precise. In, in what he asked for or whatever not yes because he was already in a camp full of warriors that that was in the army he come on specifically asked for the elders come on he wanted some mature ones 
amen, to be able to dele delegate, be delegated, to put some of, of the spirit that was up on Moses, amen, to be up on the people. You don't want to get nobody in position, amen, that does not have, uh, that's not mature, amen, because they'll go do, do their own thing, amen. They're not a candidate for uh, 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 the spirit of, amen, the leaders, amen, glory to God. And so God had to get the mature ones, amen, to put, take some of Moses' spirit so they can carry out and put up on them so they can carry out the work of the Lord. Okay, we on verse 18. Yes. And say thou unto the people, mm -hmm. sanctify yourself against tomorrow, mm -hmm. and ye shall eat flesh, for ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, My God. saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, <laughs> nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days, come on. but even a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils, my God, and it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, Why came we forth out of Egypt? Now, uh, I want to go, go ahead, honey. Now, God being displeased, you know what I'm saying? That's why sometimes they tell you, be careful what you ask for. You better be careful. You know what I'm saying? He gave them so much meat, it was coming out. Of their nostrils, nostrils, literally. You know? And I'm not talking about you just going to pick out for one day or two days. He so said for 30 days. Now you got too much meat. <laughs> it is. Because he was sure, he, they were so ungrateful. Yeah. And, and complaining. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to give you what you want. And God. God will do just that, excuse me. He'll give you just what you ask for, you know, if you keep on murmuring and complaining. He gave them so much that it was running out their nostrils. Verse 21, and Moses said, the people among who I am are 600,000 footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them mm -hmm. to sufficient them or shall all the flesh of the sea be gathered together for them to su suffice them so moses was trying to figure out okay god how you gonna do how this? you gonna do this you see it's over six hundred thousand men you know what well, we're gonna sleep the, the, the cattle and stuff we got we're gonna go ahead and have to slaughter all that and, and then cook it and all that or you gonna have to go into all the, the seas around us and, and get all the fish because it's a whole bunch of people in essence knowing, <laughs> and don't forget knowing you know, cattle that they had back then in the herds and stuff, a lot of it was used for sacrificial offerings. Right, Sin right. Sin offerings, you know what I'm saying, the peace offerings, you know what I'm saying, unto God. So right. They, they already knew they couldn't kill all the calves. Right. So, but he was trying to figure what he was trying to do, honey, in his own mind, he was trying to figure out how God going to do it. And, and we are, we like that sometimes. Amen. Amen. But it's not our job to try to figure out how God going to do it. Amen. It's, it's just our job to believe and to trust God Amen. that if he say a thing, it is so. Amen. All right. Verse 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, is the Lord hand waxed short? Come on. Thou shall see now whether my words shall come to pass unto thee or not. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and set them round about the tabernacle. Let me read. Let me, let me read uh, 23 in the Amplified. It said, the Lord said to Moses, in the Lord's hands, ability and power limited, short or inadequate, you shall see now whether my word will come to pass for you or not. Okay. So, so that was good. Amen. So he was letting them know, listen, <laughs> and my, if I said, it, you gonna watch it come and see if my words gonna fall to the ground in essence, because whenever God speak a thing, you got to know, amen, it's going to come to pass. Why? Because he's not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. God said that, meant that, and here to represent that. Come on. <laughs> and that settles that. Amen. <laughs> Go ahead. Honey. All right. Verse 25, uh -huh. and the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke and spake unto him and took the spirit that was upon him and give it unto the 
70 elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. Amen. And this is, they did not stop. When the spirit of the Lord came up on them, they began to prophesy. Amen. They start right. operating in the same spirit in which that was upon their leader. They got some of the spirit of Moses came upon them yes. and they begin to prophesy the word of the Lord. Yes, they did. Verse 26. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The name of the one was Eldad and the name of the other was me dad and the spirit rested upon them and they were of them that were written but went not out unto the tabernacle they prophesied in the camp verse 27 and there ran a young man told moses and said El dad and me dad do prophesy in the camp okay that the essence was the, <laughs> the young man was a karen <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it was a Karen, amen. Back that was Karen's back then, amen. Yeah. And as he's gonna go try to tell it, amen. That El, uh, that El Dad and me dad was prophesied within the camp. Go ahead, honey. Yes, yeah, he told it first. Right I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> verse 28 And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. He said, Stop them in essence. Hey. And Moses said unto him, Envy is thou for my sake. Huh? Will God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit upon them. Amen. So just know when the Lord begins to put the spirit of God upon you, amen, there are going to be naysayers. There's going to be people, amen, that's going to be envious. That's going to be people that's going to be jealous, amen, because the spirit of the Lord is upon you. Everybody's not going to be like it, liking the fact that God decided to dump his oil upon you, dump his anointing upon, dump this call of God upon your life, amen. There are going to be haters, amen, uh, uh, people that, people that say, well, they, listen, I'm telling you, haters, amen, Satan was the number one one hater. Amen. They say, well, put away with hater. Everybody talking about haters. Amen. But we got an ultimate hater, which is Satan. Amen. And, and until, amen, Jesus come back, we gonna have haters. Amen. But this tonight is a word to let you know how to deal with them. Amen. Glory to God. Let you know that you always gonna have them among you. They was there in the beginning. They're gonna be there until the end. Amen. But yet and still, amen, continue in the work of the Lord. Yeah, read verse 29 again from, from your Bible. 29 okay it said but moses said unto him are you jealous for my sake he said what that all the lord's people were prophets and the lord and the lord would put his spirit up on them 30 yeah. then moses went back into the camp he and the elders of israel that was the 70 we on 31 yes y'all and there went forth a wind from the lord and brought quails from the sea yes and let them fall by the camp as it were day's journey on this side and as it were a day's journey on the other side mm -hmm. where two cubits high upon the face of the earth now he brought quails now i've had quails i don't know if that it's was good. exactly the meat that he was giving them to eat for for a month yes it was. however it was. <laughs> it, it was a tasty delicacy yeah quail is good i've quail actually had the pleasure too. of having them it's like a mini chicken i like it i can eat about i can eat about, <laughs> about four, four of them <laughs> <laughs> easily i mean but they were ungrateful quail is like a delicacy now but yeah. you know then they were just they were have you ever seen a pe people that you know no matter what happens and how god blessed them they was just ungrateful and this is what the children of israel was like they were very ungrateful go ahead all right, verse 33. And while the flesh was yet between their teeth, uh, it was chewed. The wrath of the Lord was kindled against the people, and the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. See? Oh, my God. God was angry. I want to tell you that God is angry at people that murmur and complain, especially the ones that he had provided for. Sometimes I'll be looking at people and I'll be like, Lord, you, you know, you couldn't even walk a mile in my shoes. You know, some people, this, especially this generation, they're just so different, you know, 
I, I mean, was times I went through some stuff. I done washed clothes in a tub. You hear what I'm saying? I done been through some things. I know how to survive. Amen. And, and, uh, but this generation, they want stuff instant. They want, they want, they got to have the design and they got to have things handed to them, but they don't want to work hard for nothing. Amen. But that's not how I was brought up. And this is where the children of Israel was. They act like they was royalty. They act like they was the, the kings and queens, but they were the peasants in essence. Now God makes that turn them from peasants and brought them out of their state. And they still and, and, and raining down royalty. Amen. Made a manna for them. Raining down quail. And they were still murmuring and complaining. My God. Uh, ungrateful people. Yeah. We, we already, we know, you know, I, I've said it once or twice, you know, mm -hmm. the, Israel, the Israelites were a hard-headed bunch of people. They were. <laughs> and, and at one point in time, but my God's God. mercy and grace upon them. It endured forever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Thank God for mercy, right? Yeah. His, his mercy. This will be for Jesus. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So God was dealing with these people. And he was. And he didn't play that. As you see, he caused the plague to be upon him. He caused the, you with, know. Yeah, with the very meat that y'all asked for. Mm -hmm. And he also caused them to uh, to be um, burned up. You know, he, he literally set a fire, set them on fire. He literally actually killed some people because they murmured and complained. And who likes to murmur and complain? And the more and more you do for them, nobody want no ungrateful people around them. And if that didn't grab your attention, I don't know what would. Just imagine <laughs> your neighbor or even your family member coming and complaining, and then the next few seconds they you see them on up. fire. You know, you consumed by fire. You kind of wish. I wish you'd have never told me. Right, exactly. You don't have nothing to do with that. You back up. Do with but in spite of that, honey, guess what? They still they turn around after all that happened, like that was normal. I mean, like that was you know what I'm saying? Like that's normal. They act like that was nothing. Because I just imagine some of them people were, were their family members. You see what I'm yeah, saying? But they still, amen, right after that, they still murmured and complained. They were just as stiff neck uh, as their heart was just as hard as Pharaoh's heart was. Absolutely. That's that, that, that's that mentality we was talking about. The Egypt mentality. Yeah, the Egypt mentality. Yes. Verse right. 34. And he called the name of that the place Kibroth. Hataba. Hataba. Because there was, they buried the people that lusted. And the people journeyed from Kibroth Hataba unto Hazel Ruth and above at Hazel Rock. Read that again at, at, at your verse. Which one, honey? Verse 34 and 35. So that place was named Kibroth Hataba, the graves of greediness. The graves of greediness. Because they, because there they buried the people who had been greedy. <laughs> they were buried for more than the manna that God provided for them. From Kibroth Hatava, the people set out from Hezera, and they remained at Hezera. Amen. Amen. We close in the book. Amen. So, On tonight. So God, with, with the, this priest love complaining, he he actually gave them what they wanted, but they really didn't. They really didn't want it after what after they complained about it. And when they got know, so much of it, we gotta realize when when God is working with us, we have to stop the complaining you and know? be grateful and be thankful for what He has blessed and us I ain't for. Just talking to God, you know, I'm talking to me at at, at times. Too. Amen. We gotta be grateful. That song said, "Be grateful, be grateful, be grateful." Hallelujah for the Lord. What the Lord has run, uh, uh, how the Lord has brought you out. The Lord, the things that God has brought you through. Amen. That's a gratitude. One thing about it is God delights and he's like a, um, God came and God is, is a, has a, was came in a form with, in Jesus. He was a man, excuse me. And so one thing about a man, the characteristics of a man, they like the ego to be stroked, stroked. And when we tell God how much we thank him and we appreciate him, it comes up before him like a sweet smell and savor to his nostrils. And one thing, when things smell good, what you do, you bend over and you smell it. You inhabit it. You dwell in that place where things are, where the aroma is pleasant. And so if you want God to abide with you, amen, and lean over in your direction and answer your prayers, amen, we got to learn how to begin to worship him. The Bible says even in the scripture that we must enter into his gates. There's a way that we have to even pray. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. This is how we move in the spirit. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. We enter in with thanksgiving to his course with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Then it opened up an atmosphere for us to go into the holies of holies, the place where whatever we ask God is, and whatever that place where whatever the, the request is to God, it can be answered because we behind the veil. 
And a lot of people want to know that's how to get to that secret place in God. Amen. Well, God has given us foundation through the scripture, how we must go enter in, amen, his presence, amen, with thanksgiving. Amen. And one thing about it, when you begin to praise a man, Amen. What it does, it causes muscles to flex. Amen. He might not physical uh, flex, but it causes chest to stick out. Amen. Because you are stroking his ego. And so it is with God. You can't praise a God, your God, and he don't come in. Amen. When you begin to praise, amen, God, the spirit of the Lord begins to come on in. Amen. And what they did, they, they were complaining. It displeased God. Amen. After all the things that he had done for them, they had the nerve, amen, to complain, amen, to him. About the smallest thing. About the smallest thing. About the, a piece of meat. When he was providing the whole time. Where he didn't let their clothes wear out. He didn't let their shoes, amen, wear out. Amen. Through all that, all that wondering and bringing up out, he didn't let none of that happen. And we have the nerve to complain. Are you in that place tonight? That place of complaining. That place of, of murmuring. And we wonder why God doesn't answer our prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Because instead of us, we tell everybody about it. Sister so-and-so, this is this, this, this. Take it to God. I don't know about it, but I'll be taking to God. Amen. Unless you're going to tell sister such such and such, y'all going to pray together. Amen. But when I took those problems to God to this morning, I, I, I had a little talk with Jesus. <laughs> and I told him all about my troubles. I begin to tell them this is this and this is this and God I need you to fix this for them I need you to turn it around for this and this because it's all, it was all on me and not necessarily all my problems but things that are around me amen so you know you carry the burdens of things that are around you and so I begin to pray to God about it but when I begin to turn the burdens over to Jesus I felt so much better amen instead of complaining about it to other people so we encourage you tonight, amen, to, amen, take your problems to the Lord, amen, show God gratitude and give him thanksgiving for all the things that he has done for you, amen, Don't, songwriter said, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out, Jesus, I'll never forget how you saved my soul, amen, you can never forget what the things that the Lord has done for him, and you must show him gratitude for the things that he has done. Right. Amen. You want to say something, honey? Because never, never uh, forget it. When he blesses you and gives you the thing that you want, you know, you have to keep acknowledging him. And say, thank because, you, Lord. You know, I appreciate you. We don't always have to come to God in, in the time of trouble and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We should be able to come to him all the time, even in amongst our happiness and our joy. Yes, and show him gratitude. Amen. And y'all know, amen, we, we all human. When when my children, when they was growing up and I did a lot, I used to do a lot of cooking for my children. They would have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and I would give them snacks. And I would make homemade snacks and stuff for me. But when my children told me, oh, mama, that is so good. It just made me want to cook more. You know what I'm saying? It made me want to serve them more. It made me want to try something new. To, you know, I would make the, I would get some chocolate chip cookies and I would put some vanilla ice cream in it, you know, for they little dessert. It made me want to make brownies. It made me, you know, want to do experiment different things because I was but they they encouraged me amen because they they told me that they appreciated me and so how much more our heavenly father and who has created everything amen in this world amen and the worlds amen he's created all things and he just wants thanks for us amen we pray tonight that we said something amen that encouraged your soul that uh motivated you amen to uh be better for christ amen to show him gratitude when you wake up don't forget to tell god thank you amen when you lay down don't forget to tell god thank you when god blesses you don't forget to tell god thank you amen because somebody amen somewhere don't have what you have Amen. At this time, amen. We just thank God again for you all. And thank God for our leaders for the opportunity, amen, to be able to come uh, before God's people on tonight. It's time uh, touch somebody, touch a neighbor and say it's offering time. <laughs> it's offering time it's offering time if you have enjoyed the word of god amen you can definitely not pay amen the word of god amen god paid for this word with his life amen and you can never pay him enough but on tonight we're asking that you get your best seed get your best seed sow a seed on tonight amen and and we will continue in the vein of our leaders this is the eighth month amen go ahead and sow a seed in the form of eight amen if you want to do more amen go ahead amen tonight if you want to know how to sow eight, eight will be a good number because it's the eighth month 
It's the 17th day, but one plus seven equals what? Eight. Amen. Come on. New beginnings today. New beginnings. In the Amen. Book, so in the into book of numbers. Come on, come on up in here. Give me five. Come on, ma'am. <laughs> amen. So listen today, amen. Double. This is a double eight. You want a double blessing tonight? Amen. Go ahead. So double tonight in the form of eight. Amen. Sixteen dollars. Amen. Whatever is it? What is it? Thirty. Whatever. 16 and 16 is what 32. Come on. Amen. So tonight, so great. And so into, amen. So for your children, so for your destiny, so for your blessing on tonight. Amen. And you, you know, want to know how to sow at the bottom of the screen. If it's our cash app information, it's dollar sign Apostle Angela Miles. Amen. Dollar sign Apostle Angela Miles. Amen. Right. Amen. Give it his living, honey. Don't, don't be a complainer. Amen. Don't like, murmur and complain. Don't Amen. Murmur and complain. Amen. You got to sow a seed to reap a harvest. You hear me? And the, the harvest is always greater than the seed. Amen. One singular seed can, uh, can reap a great harvest. If you don't have it on tonight, we understand, but we're going to get ready to pray. Amen. If you're still getting your money, your funds together, you're still trying to sow, go ahead, but we're going to pray blessings over you tonight. I'm going to go ahead and pray, honey, if that's okay. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we're going to touch and agree tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord God, for the seeds that are being sold on tonight. We pray, Father, even as this day is the 17th day of the eight months, which, uh, which is double eight. I pray double blessings upon your people, Father. Blessings, oh God, that they can't, oh God, hallelujah, contain. Blessings that run over tonight. A blessings, God, is that succeeding abundantly and above all they can ever ask or think on tonight. God, give them that increase. Give them double, God, for their trouble on tonight, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, you said, for your shame, I'll give you the double. I pray in the name of Jesus that you would bless, God, everybody that participated, God, in giving on tonight. And even bless the ones that did not have the funds tonight that on the next time that they'll be able to give. God, I pray that you will bless them, press down, shaking together and run it over and cause men to give unto their bosoms. And I decree it and I declare it in Christ Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen and amen. And your seed is blessed on tonight because you are a blessed body of believers. Amen. At this time, we're just going to remind you of our... Um, of our announcements. If I can't find these uh, banners, I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and um, announce everything if you do not mind. On tomorrow night, touch somebody say tomorrow is Thursday. Thursday. What is Thursday? Thursday is the healing seat. Amen. With my, uh, I am the, the head host prophet is Sharonda Mims. Alongside of me, I have two beautiful co-hosts. There are um, Prophetess Angie Allen and Sister Carmel Smith. Amen. And we are the Healing Seat. Amen. You can locate us on Facebook under Ministry Moment Healing Seat page or also on YouTube. Amen. Under the Ministry uh, Moments uh, Lady. Amen. And you can locate us. We come on tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Amen. Govern yourself according to that. Amen. Also on... Sunday. Sunday. Amen. We have our Sunday service. Amen. We won't be in your face. Your pa pastor and apostle will definitely be here. If I'm not mistaken, they will be tag team. And don't you love it? Amen. When they come together, they bring it. I'm telling you, they bring in the heat. They bring in the fire. Amen. When they come together, I love it. So be, stay tuned. Amen. 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, 12, 12, uh, um, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time for our Sunday services. Amen. That's this Sunday at 11 sharp. Amen. Also on Tuesday, Monday, Monday excuse me. Ooh, we can't forget that. A Monday, amen, corporate of prayer with our very own Apostle Angela Miles. Now, everybody know that. It's always fire. Amen. She's going to bring the heat. Amen. On Monday night. Amen. Bring your petition. Bring your problem. Bring your children. Amen. Sign on. Amen. For Monday night prayer. Amen. It starts at 7 o'clock. P.M. Central Standard Time and 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Talk with God. Amen. Let's go have and have our talk with God on Monday nights with Apostle Angela Miles. Also on um is that uh Tuesday? Amen. Wow. Tuesday, amen, is the fiery prayer call with your very own prophetess, Sharonda Mims. It's also May McCarty, Prophetess Angela Miles. I mean, um Deaconess, Deaconess uh May McCarty, excuse me. Prophetess Angie Allen, excuse me, and also our very own Apostle 
Angela Miles. Amen. She gives a word and she concludes the matter. And it's always boom. Amen. So do us a favor. Amen. We will, uh, the flyers will be up on our pages. Amen. That is 6 a.m. Fiery Prayer Call with your very own prophet of Sharonda Mims and company. Also, on Tuesday evening, we have at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have our very own Prophetess Angie Allen with our children's ministry. If you have a child, you have a grandchild, and you want them to be a part of an online ministry where it is um, governed and it is private, amen, and you can also, parents can join in as well, amen, we have a children ministry, we're in a day and a time where children and their youth, amen, need to know God, we're in a generation that don't know God, amen, but if you want your children or grandchildren, nieces and nephews to know about God, amen, do us a favor and go ahead and um, inbox us or send us an email to I want to see you win at gmail.com and we will get your kids signed up for our children's ministry. Amen. That concludes all of, no, we have Wednesday night, excuse me, Bible study again, where we, right where we at today. Amen. Tell somebody, amen. We got it going on. And I want to see you win ministries. Govern yourself according to all these announcements. Amen, honey. It was awesome tonight. Amen. The word of God was awesome. And I pray, amen, that the spirit of God touched you and edified you on tonight as we were. Amen. God bless you all again. And thank you for tuning in to I Want to See You Win Wednesday Night Bible Study. Be blessed of the Lord. Know that, amen, our apostle and our, and our pastor loves you and so do we. God bless you all. Bless you. Mwah.